Perfect. All right, everybody, what's going on? And welcome to another edition of Swag Talk. Of course, this is the show where we cover the swag inside and out. And I'm your tour guide around the swag. See Wells coming at you. And we're going to hop on into the Swag Talk time machine for another edition of this. Um, we're going to take a look at the 2016 season of the Grambling State Tigers. Um, this is the only team from the swag that won the Celebration Bowl. So I felt like we should get them some flowers. Um, I know a lot of people bring it up, but I think we should, you know, get them the, the whole bouquet of flowers and salute them for the run that they had this season, uh, which is the 2016 season. So we're going to go take a look at each game, you know, look at box score from each game and see how they did and just talk about how this team was. Because I do think this this was one of the best SWAC teams um, to come through in a long time. So um, probably – it, you know, probably the best team before the J, this JSU run that we had the last couple of years. Um, this team was very, very good. Um, should have won that FBS game, and we'll talk about that game in a minute. Um, very, very dominant team, man. Ran through the swag. Um, just really had their way with, with teams and, and did it offensively, defensively. Man, this was a really good team. And this team came from the doldrums of that late or the early 2010s Gremlin where the team was very, very bad. Um, so we're going to talk about all of that, man. But before we do that, you can check out the socials down on the screen down below. Uh, Facebook is Swag Talk, Instagram, Swag Talk, Twitter, Swag Talk 76. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Uh, feel free to comment on your thoughts on this season, uh, what you thought about this Gremlin team. Um, were they the best team? Um in a, in a long time, uh, were they the best swag team that you saw, or uh, you know whether you think that they rank in that in that um, in in that category? So, um, like the video, share it, hit that notification bell, comment, and subscribe. Do all of that. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and jump directly into this, man, because this is this is a fun one um, for me, um, just because I, I I really wanted to take a closer look at this team because I didn't really dive too deep into it because in 2016 they beat the brakes off my Jags and I ain't really want no parts of Gremlin. So let's go ahead and jump back. But to, to get to 2016, man, you got to go back a little bit. Um, 2012 was um, the year Gremlin really hit that downfall. You know, they they all uh, had that uh, boycott um, where they, you know, with the, uh, the conditions at school and everything. And that team ended up finishing 1-10. Um, so you know, not a lot. This team was coming off the. Uh, this team that came off of a swag championship in 2011, uh, 2012 they went one and 10. 2013 they went one and 11. Uh, 2014 they went seven and five. So they bounced. They bounced right back up. Uh, 2015 they went nine and three and went to the swag championship uh, where they would lose to Alcorn uh, by a score of 49-21. Um, then they would. Um, that was set. That was set the pace for this. 20, 2016 season where they would go 12 and one and make the celebration bowl. And then they would ultimately cap off this run uh, by winning another swag championship in 2017 um, and going back to the celebration bowl um, where they would lock, where they would lose to North Carolina A&T in 2017. Uh, they would 11, uh, they were uh, 11 and two in 2017, um, making it back to the swag championship game and the celebration bowl. Uh, before ultimately starting to hit that down that downward trend that Gremlin has been on the last few years, um, so the glory days, you know, the the this this mid 2010s team, uh, 2016 was like I said, they were very dominant. Um, we'll look at some numbers and things in a minute, but we're gonna go gonna look at each game, man. Gonna take a take a take a walk through time and, and enjoy this. So. Um, they jumped off this season, man, with, with the quickness, um, playing with Gene Lindsberg, 
Uh, they beat them by a score of 72 to 12 to open up their season. Um, they outscored Virginia Lynchburg uh, 35 to 6 in the first quarter. Um, halftime score was actually uh, 56 to 6. Grambling, you know, they 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 got a lot of scoring in a lot of different ways in this in this first half. Uh, Devontae Kincaid had an eight yard touchdown run. Um, Martez Carter, Mr. Excitement, had um, an 87 yard kickoff return and a 57 yard return on a punt uh, for touchdowns. Uh, Verlan Hunter had two uh, pass receptions, one from 22 yards and one from 10 yards out. Uh, Jamil Jackson had a pick six for Groundland from four yards out. Uh, Kincaid had a 69 yard touchdown run, uh, which was his second of the game. Um, they also had a 32-yard touchdown pass from Kincaid. Um, all that was surrounding a Virginia Lynchburg 80-yard kick, 80-yard uh, pick six uh, that they got um, to make the score seven to six. Uh, and then Gramlin, you know, like I said, they ran away with it from there. Uh, Lynchburg did get a touchdown right out, right out of the half. Uh, and then Gramlin scored uh, two touchdowns in the in the fourth half, in the second half, and a safety uh, to wrap up their scoring, 72 to 12. Um, they really obviously dominated this game. They had over 402 yards rushing, held the Dragons to minus 19 rushing. Uh, Groundland Gr average 10.1 yards per carry and three touchdowns. Um, they threw the ball for 263 yards, uh, four touchdowns. They did have three interceptions on the day. Uh, Lynchburg, 242 passing, one touchdown, two interceptions. Total offense, 223 for Lynchburg. Uh, 3.3 yards per play. Gramlin averaged 8.9 yards per play and 665 uh, yards of total offense. Uh, they were led in rushing by Devontae Kincaid. He had four carries, 139 yards and two touchdowns. Averaged 34.8 yards per carry. Uh, Carter had 26 yards per carry, three for 78. Uh, Kincaid also threw the ball for 107 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, he did have three interceptions in that game. Uh, so, you know, this was obviously, this was one of those games where, you know, it's your first game, you know, you kind of going, you know, going through the motion, so to speak. And you, you know, you kind of took care of business and, and blew out an overmatched team. Um, the game to me, that was the missed opportunity for this team was the next week, uh, September 10th, they went to Tucson, Arizona to take on the Arizona Wildcats and Gremlin lost this game 31 to 21, but they led this game at the half by a score of 21 to three. Um, Kincaid led his offense on, on, a, on a very good first half. He threw two touchdowns in his first half, one uh, to Hunter from two yards out and one from and one to Lindsay from 26 yards out. Uh, Arizona got a field goal in the second quarter. Martez Carter got a one-yard touchdown run for Groundland with 16 seconds left in the first half. On that drive, that Carter scored that, that touchdown to, get, to put them up 21-3. Uh, Kincaid got injured, and he did not come back in the second half. Uh, like I said, Groundland went into the second half up 21-3. to uh, They will ultimately not score again. Uh, Arizona will score four touchdowns in the second half to win this game by a score 31-21. to Grambling turned the ball over six times in the second half. Uh, four straight turnovers in the third quarter alone, um, surrounded by a, a punt and then two more turnovers. Um, so they really just could not get out of, you know, could not get out of their own way in the second half. You figure if they had that same pace um, with Kincaid in the game in the second half, they would win this game. I, I would take that to my grave that Gramlin would have won this game if Kincaid didn't get hurt. Um, like I said, six turnovers in the second half, you're not going to beat anybody, let alone an FBS team. But Gramlin actually dominated this game. Um, they, they, uh, they, 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 they led the um, total, they led the total yardage, uh, 462 to 445. Uh, yards per play were even at 5.8. Grambling threw the ball for over 402 yards. They did not have a good game running the ball, so that was probably their one downfall. Uh, they ran the ball for 60 yards, averaged 1.7 yards per carry. They did go give up 222 to uh, Arizona, uh, 4.7 yards per carry to the Wildcats. But like I said, those six turnovers is what did Grambling in. Three fumbles, three interceptions, and also 12 penalties for 86 yards. All those three, all those things will conspire to keep you from winning a game like this. You know, with games like this, you have to play your best. You can't have any mistakes. Uh, they converted nine of fifteen on third down. Very good. They won the time of possession. 
They were three for four in the red zone. And they um they, you know, they 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 held their own in the first half, second half. They just could not get out of their own way. Um due to turnovers. Uh Trevon Cherry came on in reserve for Kincaid, and he was 16 for 25 for 209. Uh, he had no touchdown, but he did have three interceptions, and he was sacked four times. So you can see the offense just took a different look um, when he came in, and, you know, the offense just could not really get anything going. Um, but Chad Williams had a big game for Grambling. He had 13 catches for 152 yards in this game. Uh, Dominique Leak had five catches for 91 yards. Uh, Martez Carter had five for 71. Uh, Verland Hunter had five for 41. So they definitely struck – really big through the air in this game, but they came up short. Um, the second half, it, it, it was a killer. You know, I think, you know, you don't like to play ifs and ands, and you don't like to say, you know, this guy didn't get hurt. But that to me, I feel like the way the offense was playing and the defense in the first half, um, you keep that same intensity and the same lineup on the field in the second half, I think you win this game um, because I don't think you turn the ball over six times with that offense. Um, but Groundland bounced back the next week uh, and beat Jackson State by a score of 35 to 14, uh, picking up their first swag win of the season. Um, this game, Groundland jumped out again in a big first half. Uh, they led this game 28 to nothing uh, after the midpoint of the third quarter. Halftime score was 21 to nothing. Uh, Chad Williams had a 51 yard pass from Kincaid to open up the scoring. Joe, uh, Joe Mac Williams had a 62 yard pick six. Um, for Gramlin to make score 14 to nothing in the first quarter. Uh, Martez Carter had a one yard touchdown run for Gramlin to make the halftime score 21 to nothing. Uh, they got a 51 yard fumble return for a touchdown to make the score 28 to nothing. Uh, before Jackson got a fumble recovery in the end zone to make the score 28 7. Uh, Justin Kelly got a one yard touchdown run for Gramlin to make the score 35 7 before Jackson State scored a touchdown with. 656 left in the game to make the final score 35 14. Uh, like I said, this Gramlin basically led this game from start to finish. Neither team ran the ball well. Gramlin ran the ball for 79 yards, Jackson State 65. Gramlin 227 through the air, 19 to 32. Uh, one touchdown, no interceptions. Gramlin 210, and Jackson State 210 through the air, 25 or 46. Uh, one touchdown, two interceptions. Jackson State 275 total yardage. Uh, 3.9 yards per play. They did have one fumble. Uh, Groundlin fumbled the ball twice, uh, three times. They lost two in this game. So again, turnovers uh, were kind of, kind of, kind of there, but they didn't hurt in this game. 306 yards, 4.7 yards per play. Um, defensively, they had uh, three sacks on the night. So they definitely, you know, had a really solid outing, outing there. Um, individual guys for Groundlin, um, Kincaid. 19 of, 19 of 32 for 227 and a touchdown. He was sacked twice. Kelly led ground, led ground with 14 carries to 46 yards. Carter, 10 for 25. Uh, Williams, 7 for 131. So back to back 100 yard games for him. Uh, receiving also had a touchdown for 51 yards. Um, Diaris Christmas, 10 tackles to lead Gramlin. Uh, tackles for loss. Uh, Werner, Varner and Banks each had one. Um, Cook, Cooper had one and a half sacks to lead the Tigers uh, of Groundland. And uh, McWilliams and Jackson each had an interception in this game. So, like I said, a nice bounce back win for Groundland uh, coming off of that disappointing loss to um, Arizona. And from this point on, this team would go on a run. Uh, they would win every game. Every game left on their schedule before the SWAG championship, they would win every game by double digits. And that started – well, obviously, this was a double-digit victory. Uh, but then they would beat Alcorn the next uh, the next week, September 24th. They would beat them 43-18, to 18, um, another big, big victory for the Tigers um, against a rival. Um, Alcorn actually led this game 8-7 to seven, um, after one. They had a, a, a touchdown – pass and uh safety um martez carter had a 17 yard reception from ken k for a touchdown over another score all corn would score the next eight points um and then Groundlin would get a safety in the second quarter and then the tigers were off to the races uh jordan jones caught a seven yard pass from ken k made the score 16 to eight 
Uh, Grambling, I mean, Alcorn would get a field goal. Uh, to make it score 16-11. Hunter would catch a 20-yard pass from Kincaid to make it score 23-11. Uh, Kincaid would run the ball, run a seven-yard touchdown. Uh, extra point, no good, 29-11. Um, halftime score was 16-8. Uh, so halftime was close. Uh, first half was close. Second half, Ramlin blew it open. Uh, like I said, uh, Kincaid got his touchdown to make it score 29-11. Uh, Chad Williams caught a 67-yard pass from Kincaid. Uh, to make the score 36 to 11. Alcorn would get a touchdown on an 87 yard kickoff return to make the score 36 18. Uh, Carter would, would cap off the scoring with a 47 yard pass from Kincaid uh, to make the score 43 to 18, which was the final score that touchdown came in the fourth quarter. Uh, Gremlin, 134 yards on the ground in this game. Uh, 3.7 yards per carry, all corn 175, 4.3 yards per carry. All Gremlin had one touchdown. All corn uh, 202 through the air, 19 to 37, one touchdown, one interception. Gremlin 400 yards through the air, 30 of 42, five touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, all, uh, all corn 377 yards of offense, 4.8 yards per play. They did fumble twice, lost them both. Gremlin 6.8 yards per play, 534 yards. Uh, they still had that problem with fumbles. They fumbled three times and lost two. Um, defensively, they registered um, one sack. All corn had four sacks on the night. Uh, time of possession was pretty even. Neither team did anything on third down. Um, both teams kind of struggled there. But uh, Kincaid, 30 of 42 for 400 yards, five touchdowns, no interceptions. Like I said, he was sacked four times. Uh, Kincaid also ran the ball for 58 yards on 14 carries and one touchdown. Carter, uh, 12 for 53. Uh, Chad Williams, another 100-yard game, this time 13 for 188 and a touchdown. Um, as you can see, he was on a tear. That's three straight games of 100-plus yards. Um, Carter, 6 for 78 and two touchdowns. Uh, Lee, 3 for 65. Hunter, 4 for, 40, four for 45 and a touchdown. Uh, defensively, uh, Stallworth led the team with 14 tackles. Hatter, eight. Uh, tackle for loss, Cooper had four. Uh, Reese had the sack interceptions. Uh, Dixon had the interception for, for Gramlin. And like I said, this team was off to the running. Um, they would then head to the uh, the uh, State Fair Classic where they would take on Prairie View, and they would win that game by a score of 36 to 16. Prairie View led this game, Prairie View led this game 16 to 7 after the first quarter. Um, they got a safety to open up the game. The Panthers did. Uh, then they would get a 49-yard touchdown pass to take a 19 to nine to nothing lead. Uh, they closed out the first quarter up. Or excuse me, they closed. They they went toward the end of the first quarter up 16 to nothing after a 33-yard uh, touchdown run. Uh, Chad Williams would get grounded on the board late in the first quarter uh, with a 13-yard pass from Kincaid, make the score 16 to seven. Uh, Kincaid would run an 11-yard touchdown to make the score 16-14. Uh, Groundler will get a safety two minutes before the half to make the score 16 all going into halftime. Uh, Justin Kelly will get Groundler on the board after the half to make the score 23 to 16 on a two yard run. Uh, Kelly will get another two yard run, a minute and 29, uh, a minute with 10 with 10 left in the fourth quarter. Uh, he would get another touchdown run this time with two yards out. Extra point was blocked this time 29 to 16. And then Kincaid will get a 14 yard touchdown run. Uh, to cap off the scoring with 301 left in the game to make the score 36 to 16. So this time they had to come from behind in the first quarter. Uh, most first half, the, in, up until this point, they had had quick starts. Uh, this first half, they were uh, they had a bad first quarter, uh, but they still were able to really control this game. Uh, they, this was their first big rushing game of the season um, besides the Lynchburg game. They ran up off of 296 yards on the night. Uh, 6.2 yards per carry and four touchdowns. Um, they threw the ball for 182 yards. Uh, no touchdowns, one interception. Uh, they fumbled once and didn't lose it, so no turnovers in this game. This was the first game in, in a while that they didn't turn the ball over. Uh, 478 yards, 6.1 yards per play. Uh, defensively, they they uh, did not register a sack in this game, so they Purview was able to take the quarterback, but 415 on third down for the ground and defense. Was, was a big key for the Tigers um, being able to dominate this game from the second quarter on. 
Uh, can carry 17 to 30, 182 yards, one touchdown, no interception, two sacks. Kelly, 20 for 117 on the, gr on the ground, two touchdowns. He averaged 5.9 yards per carry. Uh, Kincaid, 14 for 90, uh, 6.4 yards per carry, two touchdowns. Carter, 12 for 82, 6.8 yards per carry. So really, really solid running game with three guys. Uh, the passing attack, uh, Chad Williams had his first sub-100 yard game. In, in after uh, three straight 100 yard games, this time he had six for 83 and a touchdown. Uh, league four for 51. Uh, defensively, uh, the leading tackler was Christmas with uh, five, Dixon had five as well, and Cooper with five. Uh, tackles for loss, Cooper with two, and Cargo with two. Uh, interceptions went to Cargo, Jackson, and Stallworth. So, not a great game for, for Grambling in the, in the State Fair Classic, but they were able to overcome some early adversity and, and get get the job done. Um, they would take a they would take two weeks off. This, this, this is a rare <laughs> this is a rare back to back bye week. But they had two weeks off before they headed to Itabino to take on Valley, and they did not they did not seem rusty at all. They went to Valley and beat Valley fifty nine to ten. Um, they dominated this game from start to finish. They led this game by score at 35 to 3 at the half. Uh, scores went to Leak on a 40 yard pass from Kincaid. Carter, 35 yard run. Uh, Valley got a field goal to stop that run. Uh, Groundland would go on another run. This time, Leak, a 47 yard pass from Kincaid. Carter, a 25 yard pass from Kincaid. Uh, Davis, a 26 yard pass from Kincaid to make the halftime score 35 to 3. Uh, they had a block punt. Return for a touchdown to make the score 42 to 3. Uh, they got a field goal to make the score 45 to 3. Uh, Kelly had a five yard run for Gramlin in the fourth quarter to make the score 52 to 3. Uh, Mac Williams had a block punt return um, to make the score 59 to 3. And then Valley would get a touchdown with 15 seconds left in the game uh, to make the score 15, 59 to 10. So two block punts for touchdowns for Gramlin. Uh, surrounded by some uh, big play offense, and they were able to seal the deal in this one. Um, they held Valley to minus 35 yards rushing on the night. Uh, they ran the ball for 196 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, 339 through the air for uh, Gramlin, 21 and 31. They had four touchdowns, one interception. Uh, total offense, 535 for the Tigers on 60 plays, 8.9 yards per play. They fumbled once and lost it, so they turned the ball over two times in this game, but Obviously, it didn't hurt them at all. Uh, the defense held Valley to 4 15 on third down, 1 or 2 on fourth down. They had eight sacks as a defense, so definitely, definitely was disruptive in this game. Uh, like I said, the two block punts, uh, special teams did their job. Kincaid, 20 or 27, four, uh, four touchdowns, one interception, 326 yards. Uh, Carter, nine carries, 91 yards in the touchdown. Kincaid, nine for 52. Kelly, eight for 36 and a touchdown. Uh, Leak had four for 109 and two touchdowns. Carter, three for 57 and a touchdown. Uh, Chad Williams, four for 56. Uh, defensively, uh, Reese led the team with five tackles. He had also had four tackles for loss and three sacks. Huge game for him. Uh, Christmas, one and a half sacks and one and a half tackles for loss. Uh, Cooper also had one and a half tackles for loss. Um, no interceptions for Gramlin. Uh, no forced fumbles. Uh, they did have two fumble recoveries, but um, really big game for Gramlin um, against a, a team that was overmatched, a Valley team that was overmatched. Um, they um, did, they were not able to compete in this game. Valley dropped to 0 and 8 at that point, so they really weren't um, really weren't hitting on too much at this point. Uh, the next game, Gramlin would ramp it up even more on homecoming. Against Pine Bluff, they would beat the Golden Lions by a score of 70 to nothing. Um, just really ran through Pine Bluff in this one. Um, second quarter was huge. Four touchdowns in that in that quarter. Uh, 14 points in the first quarter, 14 in the third, and 14 in the fourth. Uh, Chad Williams, two, two first half touchdowns, one from 70 yards, one from 25 yards. Uh, Jones, a five-yard pass from Kincaid. Uh, Lindsey, a 37-yard pass from Kincaid. Uh, Cooper, a two yard, 22 yard interception, made the score 35 to nothing. Uh, Leak, a 71 yard pass from Kincaid, and made the score 42 to nothing at the half. Uh, Williams, 56 yard pass from Kincaid, 49 to nothing. 
Uh, Kelly, nine yard run, 56 to nothing. Charles Wright, the backup quarterback, came in and got an 18 yard run in the fourth, 63 to nothing. Wright got another 18 yard run uh, to make the score 70 to nothing with 348 left in the game. So just a really dominant game for Gramlin um, in this one. Um, held Pine Bluff to six yards rushing, um, 170 yards, 171 yards passing for the Golden Lions, 177. A uh, total offense, really, really solid defensive game for Groundland. Um, 286 on the ground for the Tigers, 6.8 yards per carry. Uh, 457 uh, through the air for Groundland. Uh, 23 or 26, six touchdowns, no interceptions, no turnovers for Groundland. Um, 743 yards of offense, 10.9 yards per play. First down um, and more every time you ran a play. That's just a dominant game. They only punted once in this game. Um, just had their way. Um, if you had any nitpick, they were 4-10 on third down. But that's it. They had six sacks as a defense. So eight, 14 sacks in the last two games. Defense started to turn it up, made all their extra points. Um, they were 4-5 in the red zone. Just a dominant game. You don't really get much more dominant than that. Uh, Kincaid, 23-26. 457 yards and six touchdowns. Uh, Brooks, then Damian Brooks had 15 carries for 120 yards. Uh, Kelly, 14 for 88 and a touchdown. Wright, six for 66 and a two touchdowns. Uh, Chad Williams, eight for 236 yards through the air, three touchdowns. That is an amazing game right there. Um, he was, I mean, he was on a tear this year. Uh, league two for 84 and a touchdown, 107 for 41. Uh, defensively, they uh, were led. They they were led in in uh, sacks by Reese with two uh, interceptions. Went to John Johns and Cooper. They each had one interception. They just like I said, they just round based to go the Golden Lions seventy to nothing. Um, they would then go to Huntsville to take on the Bulldogs and win that game by a score fifty six to seventeen. Another another strong blowout. This time on the road. Uh, 14 and nothing after the first quarter. Uh, Lindsey, seven yard pass from Kincaid. Leak, five yard pass from Kincaid. Um, Card, uh, Carden got a field goal for, for uh, Alabama and them, 14 to three. Uh, Williams, a three yard pass from uh, Kincaid, 21 to three. Uh, Bulldogs will get a, a touchdown uh, on the main score, 21 10. Uh, Fumble recovery for Gremlin, 28-10 to 10 was the halftime score. Um, Bulldogs will get a touchdown, 28-17. Chad Williams, 19-yard pass from Kincaid, 35-17. Uh, Williams got a 29-yard pass from Kincaid, 42-17. to 17. Uh, Kelly, 13-yard run, 49-17. And then Carter will close out the score with a 5-yard run to make the score 56-17. Uh, Gremlin would... 368 on the ground in this game, held the Bulldogs to under 100 yards rushing, uh, 9.2 yards per carry, two touchdowns, 241 through the air, 20 or 37, five touchdowns, no interceptions, 609 total offense, 7.9 yards per play, two fumbles in this game, no, uh, they did force three turnovers, so they they kind of they kind of evened out, uh, three sacks for the defense, uh, five or 14 on third downs. Just like I said, this offense was just rolling, and the defense was doing their part in this run. Uh, Kincaid over 241 yards through the air, five touchdowns, no interceptions. Kelly, 200 yards on the ground, 23 carries, 200 yards. Carter, two for 80 and a touchdown. Uh, Brooks, three for 40. Um, Williams, seven for 103 touchdowns. Lindsey, five for 75 and a touchdown. Um Cooper led the team with eight tackles and two tackles for loss. Uh, Varner had one sack, uh, interceptions, none. Uh, this, Like I said, this team was – they were just mowing through people at this point. Uh, they would beat Alabama State by a score of 21 to nothing uh, on senior day at home. This was a, a game where they jumped out to a 14 nothing first quarter score. Uh, Hunter had a 16-yard pass. Uh, Carter had a two-yard run pass reception. Carter had a two-yard run halftime score, 14 nothing. Chad Williams got a 43-yard touchdown pass from Cherry in the in the fourth quarter with 51 seconds left to make the score 21 and nothing, which was the final margin. Um, this game was a little bit closer statistically. Bama State 322 yards, 
the offense, uh, 4.2 yards per play, one touchdown. Uh, Grandman, 354, total offense, 4.9 yards per play, one touchdown. Uh, 28, 228 yards of offense for uh, for Grandman, uh, 18 of 37 passing, two touchdowns, one interception. 126 yards for Grambling. Um, defensively, they registered seven sacks, so they definitely had gave Bama State a tough time, um, and they were unable to do anything offensively. Uh, Kincaid, Wright, and Cherry all got action in this game. Uh, Kelly, 12 for 60 to lead the team in rushing. Carter, 14 for 47, one touchdown. Uh, Williams, 10 for 145 and one touchdown. Uh, defensively, like I said, the seven sacks, um, just a really, really strong defensive effort um, as they made their way through the, the Hornets. Uh, they would beat Texas Southern the following week, 47-28. Um, that game was um, a game that was really close. This was a very close first half, man. Uh, score was tied at seven after one. Uh, Carter had a three-yard run with 3-11 left in the first quarter. Uh, Texas Southern would get a touchdown. Uh, the title score is seven to seven. Uh, just a side note: a, uh, a very on Hurts is is Jalen Hurts' brother. So Jalen Hurts' older brother was a Texas, Texas Southern quarterback. Um, he threw a touchdown uh, to tie the game up at seven. Uh, Texas Southern would take the lead at fourteen to seven. They would go up twenty-one to seven on another Hurts touchdown pass. Uh, they would get a fumble recovery to make the score twenty-eight to seven with ten forty-two left in the first in the first half. Uh, Verland Hunter caught a, a 14 yard pass. Um, caught a uh, thir- uh, caught a 34 yard pass uh, to make the score 20 28 14. Hunter caught a 72 yard pass from Kincaid to make the score 28 21. Uh, they would get a, a field goal to make the score 28 24, and then they would get another field goal to make the score 28 27 to end the first half. Uh, Leak would get a 32-yard pass from Kincaid to make the score 33-28. Uh, Carter would get a 10-yard touchdown run to make the score 40-28. to And then Kelly would cap off the scoring uh, to make the score 47-28 with a four-yard touchdown run. So Texas Southern led this game um, by a score of 28-27 to, uh, after, after one half. And then Groundland would score 14 points on Elsa, uh to win this game. So um, big, big, big victory. Um, big, big victory. Excuse me. Uh, Grandland would lead the score uh, 33-28 at the half. Excuse me. And uh, they would then go on to uh, score 14 points on in the second half. Texas Southern was game. They did not have a great offensive game, but they they found a way. Uh, they picked off Grandland uh, once. Uh, they forced one Grandland turn, one Grandland fumble. TSU did turn the ball over four times, so that hurt them. Um, but Bramlin ran the ball for 269, passed for 192, uh, 461 total offense defensively. They registered off uh, four sacks on the night. This was a this was another one of those games that they kind of had to battle back. Um, not a, not the sharpest game, but uh, Justin Kelly 133 yards rushing, Martez Carter 122 yards rushing and two touchdowns. Um, Hunter 106 yards receiving. So. You know, this was one of those, you know, one of those fight back from adversity type of games that you have to have during a season like that. And they were capped off their regular season, beating Southern by a score of 52 to 30. Um, Southern scored first, and then Gramlin took off from there. Um, Southern got an 18-yard pass um, to open the scoring up 6 to nothing. Carter would get an 11-yard run, 7 to 6. Hunter, 32-yard pass, 14 to 6. Uh, they would get a field goal, 17-6. Southern would get on the board um, at the 85-yard run, 17-13. They would get a 45-yard run from Kincaid. Um, in the third quarter, the so first half score was 17-13. Kincaid would open up the second half with a 45-yard run, 24-13. Uh, Carter, 31-13 off of a 66-yard run. Uh, Brooks, a 34-yard run, 38-13. Southern would get a touchdown to Mexico, 38-20. Uh, Chad Williams, a seven-yard touchdown pass, 45-20. to 20. Uh, Southern will get a field goal, 45-23. Then Carter will get an 88-yard kickoff return on the ensuing kick, 52-23. to 23. And then Southern will get a touchdown at the end of the game and make it score 52-30. to 30. Uh, This was a big – this was a game that Gramlin hit big play after big play. A lot of response plays to Southern 
Uh, both teams ran the ball well. Southern 262 on the night, Grandland 256, uh, 315 through the air for Grandland. Uh, that was the difference. Uh, Southern had one interception and one fumble. Grandland fumbled three times in this game, so that definitely hurt them. I uh, could have made the game worse if they didn't turn the ball over uh, three times. Uh, defensively, they had one sack on the night, but Southern um, was a it, it was a, a pretty solid game. But every time Southern made a play, Grandland would make a response play. Uh, Kincaid 283 through the air, one touchdown. Um, Carter 118 yards on the night, rushing uh, two touchdowns. Uh, Kincaid 56 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Williams 10 for 81 and a touchdown. Hunter 7 for 71 and a touchdown. Like I said, uh, Carter had an 81, 88 yard kickoff return. So just play after play, Groundland was able to win, and that would send them to the SWAC championship, um, where they would beat Alcorn by a score 27 to 20. Alcorn led this game 17 to nothing at the half. Um, another game with Gremlin, you know, kind of fell behind. Alcorn, a couple of big plays, gave them a, a nice first half lead. A hunter caught a 29 yard pass to open up the second half for Gremlin 17 7. 17 7. Um, Brooks had a one yard touchdown run and made the score 17 14. Alcorn got a field goal. 20 to 15. Lee caught a two yard pass from Kincaid. The extra point was blocked. Score was tied at 20. And then with 3.38 left in the game, Carter had a 31-yard touchdown run um, to basically beat the game, winning touchdown 27-20. to 20. Um, Alcorn ran the ball 189 yards, Gramlin 175, uh, 237 through the air for Gramlin, 259 for Alcorn. Alcorn outgained Gramlin, total offense 448 to 412. Uh, Gramlin did have a seven-yard average per play, Alcorn six and a half. It was the first game uh, that Gramlin had been outgained by anybody. Um, they were just, you know, Alcorn was, you know, Alcorn had the opportunities. Um, they just couldn't seal the deal. Uh, Alcorn um, would ultimately turn the ball over two times, which hurt them. Gremlin had one turnover, but uh, Alcorn was unable to um, seal the deal at their 17 nothing first half. Uh, Lenoris Footman had a big game for Alcorn uh, with 259 yard pass and D Lance Turner 126 on the ground. Uh, Marquez, Martez Carter led ground with 136 yards on the ground and a touchdown. Average 9.7 yards per carry. Uh, Kincaid 237 and two touchdowns through the air. Uh, Williams 6 for 103 on the night. Uh, Christmas had 12 tackles and Cooper had 10 in the lead. Gramlin stalled worth with nine. And that would send Gramlin to the Celebration Bowl where they would take on North Carolina Central in the game that was won by a celebration penalty. Um, Gramlin trailed three nothing at the half. Um, second half, they uh, they they led ten to three after the third quarter. Uh, Carter had a thirty two yard run for Gramlin to make score seven three. They got a field goal with two fifty left in the game. Uh, two fifty left in the third to make score ten to three. North Carolina Central will get a touchdown on a thirty nine yard pass with uh, two fourteen left. Um, they would get a penalty for excessive celebration which led to a longer extra point, which got blocked. And Groundland would win this game by a score of 10 to 9 to win the SWAC's first and only celebration bowl. Um, Groundland ran the ball for 196 yards. They held Central to 55 on the ground. Uh, Groundland did not pass the ball well in this game. 15 to 31, 149 yards. No touchdown, one interception. Uh, Central 246 through the air, 19 to 33, one touchdown, two interceptions. Groundland 345 total offense. 4.6 yards per play. Uh, Central 301 total offense, 4.9 yards per play. Uh, let's see. Uh, Groundman, both teams had uh, three. three Groundman had two sacks. Central had two, three. Uh, six or 16 on third down for Groundman. They did win the time of possession. But ultimately, like I said, it came down to that one penalty um, that, that did it. Uh, Central had four penalties for 122 yards. And so they just really just – Penalties ate them up, but Gramlin was able to win this game. Like I said, not a spectacular game. Uh, Martez Carter did run for 109 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Williams had three for 40 through the air. That was his lowest game in quite some time. Uh, defensively, they uh, was a, more of a, a concerted team effort, but just just a really big victory, obviously, when you win the Celebration Bowl is huge. And to finish the season 12-1, and one, could have been 13-0 and 0 because they should have beat Arizona. Um, you know, really should have won that game. Uh, this team finished the season averaging 203 yards per game rushing 
uh, gave up 116. Uh, they averaged uh, 39 and 39.7 points per game. They only gave up 16 uh, through the air. They uh, 280 yards per game. Uh, they threw 33 touchdowns and seven interceptions. They had 26 rushing touchdowns. They only gave up nine rushing touchdowns. They gave up 12 passing touchdowns and 13 interceptions. Uh, 484 yards of total offense on the season per game, 6.9 yards per play. They gave up 327 per game on defense, four and a half yards per play. Uh, they registered uh, 41 sacks on the season. They did give up 35, so they gave up quite a few sacks, but they they registered a lot of sacks. They were 61% on fourth down on the season, 43 on third down, giving up 27% on third down as a defense. And 24% on offense, uh, uh, fourth downs. Um, Kincaid will finish the season um, 29, 219 and 347, 2,999 yards, 31 touchdowns, four interceptions, at a long of 72. Uh, rushing, Ken, uh, Carter will lead the team with 118 carries, 906 yards, and 11 touchdowns, at a long of 75. Kelly, 156 for 871, seven touchdowns. Uh, Brooks, uh, 44 for 285 and two touchdowns. Kincaid, 104, 264, and four touchdowns. Uh, Chad Williams will lead the team with 90 catches for 1,337 yards. Uh, 11 touchdowns, average 14.8 yards per catch at a long of 70. Average, 11, uh, average 111 yards per game. Hunter, 51 for 572, seven touchdowns. Leak, 31 for uh, seven touchdowns. Uh, 31 for 534 uh, for six touchdowns, 17.2 yards per catch. Uh, Cooper led the team with 74 tackles, Stallworth, 70, Christmas, 69 uh, tackles for loss. Cooper, seven, 17 and a half, Reese, 14 and a half uh, sacks. Smith, Reese, uh, Reese led the team with eight and a half sacks, interceptions. Uh, Jackson led the team with four. And like I said, special teams, uh, Wallace was the punter, 35.8 yards per punt. Uh, Wallace also kicked field goals. He was 5 or 9 on the season and averaged uh, four, uh, had four touchbacks on kickoffs. Uh, returns, Carter had one. Uh, let's see, Carter had one uh, punt return and uh, one kickoff return on the season. Uh, McWilliams had a block punt return. And like I said, this team was a very, very solid team. And I, I do think that this was one of the better sweat teams of all time. Um, I definitely recommend if you can find any of the games to go back and look look at them. I'm going to, uh, if I can find any games, I'm going to put together a playlist uh, so y'all can check that out. And I just want to thank y'all for tuning in to this edition of Swag Talk Time Machine as we took the trip back to 2016 and looked at the, uh, the Grambling Tigers and their celebration bowl season. So y'all catch us um, on another edition of Swag Talk. Uh, coming up soon at Swag Smoke Live on Thursday, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. And that's going to do it for me, man. I hope y'all enjoy, and we'll catch y'all on the rebound, and we'll holler at y'all later. Peace. <laughs>